Hello everyone, this is Shell Point Today for Thursday, April 16th. I'm Adam Brown. On today's show, we'll talk about vaccinations with Shell Point pharmacist Yao Adu Sarkodier. And resident Kathy Miskell will share a story with us about the attitude of yes. But first, we want to remind you that the school supply fund drive begins today and runs through April 30th. Dorothy Erickson of Nautilus will be accepting monetary donations for the annual school supplies fund drive. This effort helps provide the supplies that Shell Point employees' children need when heading back to school in the fall. Donations are tax deductible and can be left at the Island or Woodlands service desks. All checks should be made out to Shell Point with school supply in the memo line. Don't forget that in observance of Holocaust Remembrance Day, the outing to the Holocaust Museum in Naples is tomorrow. The exhibit Dearest Pauline will be featured. It's a first-hand account of medical officers who brought order to chaos in the closing days of World War II by stabilizing and restoring the health of the civilian population. Court pickups begin on the island at 9.30 a.m. and the approximate return time is 3.30. The cost of the trip is $18, with lunch on your own at Seasons 52. Another outing to consider is this Saturday to Trader Joe's for fabulous food and more. Trader Joe's is a unique grocery store in North Naples with a relaxed island shopping environment and a commitment to fair trade, good prices, and healthy eating. Court pickups begin at 12.30 on the island with an approximate return time of 5 p.m., the cost of the trip is $8, and you can sign up at either service desk. What exactly is an attitude of yes? Kathy Miskell of Sand Dollar has a pretty good idea and would like to share a story that illustrates it quite well. Do you know this story? Back in the early 1800s, then-President Thomas Jefferson and a group of his aides were traveling by horseback to a destination that required that they cross a river. The river that day was running high and fast. As they approached the crossing point, a man standing there who had been watching them walked straight up to Jefferson, looked up at him and said, Sir, I have to get across this river and I have no horse. May I ride on the back of yours? Jefferson agreed and the man climbed on and together at no small peril to both their lives, they crossed the river. When he had been safely deposited on the other side, one of Jefferson's aides came up to him and said, why, of all people, did you choose the President of the United States to ask for a ride? The man was surprised. I didn't know he was the President, he said. And all I can tell you is that as I saw your group approach, I saw on some of your faces an expression that said, no. He had a yes face. When I think of this story, I think of Shell Point's fabulous employees, because that attitude of yes is written on their hearts, and it shows in their face in their whole person, and in everything they do. This yes attitude, I believe, is part of what sets Shell Point apart from and above every other community of its kind. A donation to this year's Employee Christmas Fund is a way that we residents can say to these employees, we see you, we appreciate you, we're saying yes back to you. It's easy to give. In addition to the regular mailing with return envelope and the donation boxes that are distributed around the campus, this year we're introducing an exciting new innovation. The Employee Christmas Fund now has its own web page at shellpoint.net. It's full of useful and interesting information, and best of all, it has an online donation form. It just takes a couple of minutes to sign in, 
Choose whether you want to give a monthly gift or a one-time donation. And that's it. Off it goes. Easy, simple, quick. I encourage you to give. I'm Kathy Miskell, and I am privileged to be chairman of this year's Employee Christmas Fund Drive. To be or not to be. The famous Shakespearean line from Hamlet could apply here, but instead of to be, it's more like to do. To do or not to do. That is the question when it comes to vaccinations. To help you answer this question, pharmacist Yao Adu Sarkodier will hold a presentation next Tuesday about the positive and negative effects and important medical principles behind vaccines. Heather Batty speaks with the pharmacist now about this upcoming presentation. Hi, I'm Heather Batty from Resort Services, and today we're here with our very own pharmacist, Yao. Yao, how are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. So today we're going to be talking about something I think everybody is interested in, and that is vaccines. That's great. And the actual title of your program is Vaccines to Do or Not to Do. So I think that's certainly going to draw a lot of people in. I hope so. It will. Yeah. So I think one of the main questions a lot of people have is how do vaccines actually even work? Yeah. Uh, first of all, vaccines are made up of uh, microbes, viruses, bacteria, the same organisms that cause diseases. However, we put them in vaccines in a killed form or weakened. Therefore, they're not supposed to cause the disease that they would uh, in their wild stages. But uh, they get in the body and help us produce what we call antibodies. Mm -hmm. The antibodies are what fight off the disease that they would have caused naturally. Okay, so when you actually put it in, it actually makes those antibodies fight that little part of the, the virus that you've actually put in. That's right. And then that creates the actual vaccine. That's right. And Very the presence of the antibodies uh, is what also we call immunity. Mm -hmm. We have immunity against that disease. Sure. Yes. So are the vaccines actually for, um, do they work against viruses and bacteria? Yes. Okay. There are two main types. Like I said before, we're using bacteria or viruses uh, to make those, or parts of them called subunit, you know, vaccines, et cetera. So it could be a viral vaccine or a bacterial vaccine, depending on what disease we're trying to prevent. Wow, it's very interesting, all of that. Um, often we find out that vaccines aren't 100% effective. Is, is there a certain, why is that? The reason being, I guess, we cannot really produce a perfect vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, the influenza virus is a typical example. It's been with us forever. And we cannot create the perfect vaccine simply because the virus keeps mutating and it changes rapidly. So every year, manufacturers try to make the best, the closest, but it's mm -hmm. not perfect. So right. it keeps coming back. Yeah, so often we hear, I had the flu shot, but yet here I still got the flu. And that's because you got a different strain of right. flu or different. That's right. Uh, the vaccines are meant to cover uh, the strains that are most prevalent, okay. but not probably all of it. Therefore, you may get the disease uh, in a minimal form or a short period of time, as opposed to okay. maybe a longer time and having to hit you harder than it would if you hadn't received the vaccine. So you get a minor flu instead of a so, full-blown yeah. major flu that really knocks you down That's for right. weeks at sometimes at a time. That's correct. Now, one thing I always have this question, and then we'll get back to the vaccines. How do you get the flu? Do you get the flu from being around others with the flu, coughing, sneezing, from touching things? Pretty much. Uh, 
in our daily lives, mm -hmm. so many other ways, including what you just said. Uh, if a person sneezes around you, it's airborne. Uh, there you go. If they touch something without washing their hands or whatever, and you touch it afterwards, if they've been in an area and you get there, it could be a chair or a table, uh, you can pick it up that easily. So, uh, and that's, you know, the nuisance of yeah. the uh, flu virus. It's really not going to kill us anymore. However, it can cause that nuisance. But in certain extreme cases, like in sick people mm -hmm. or little children, yeah, sure. it can be deadly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now, I know some vaccines require a booster. Do they, how, what, what makes a vaccine require a booster? Uh, that will be uh, also discussed during the uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, we, we don't want to give too much away, right? Right, but it's okay. <laughs> we have the live or the killed uh, vaccines. Okay. If we use a live virus or usually they don't use live bacteria because those are harder mm -hmm. to make. But if it's a live virus, they do multiply after being injected into the body. And mm -hmm. those give you longer immunity, maybe five, four years, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so you may not need a booster. However, if it's inactivated or killed, uh, the boosters may be required maybe a little sooner, depending on how okay. severe. So manufacturers have uh, what we call booster requirements or schedules as to how often or how many you should have in a lifetime. Wow, all so interesting. So one question is to do or not to do, but you're not gonna answer that now. No. Because we're gonna wait and you're gonna have to go on April 21st to Yao's presentation at 10.15 at the Social Center. Vaccines to do or not to do. Have a great day. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church connections. Welcome to the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley and this is Caitlin Vanskoy and we're going to go over activities for you for the day. Before that, I want to remind you that your Academy booklets came out yesterday and the order forms for the courses and trips you might want to take are located in the back of your booklets. So fill those out and turn them in today because it is the Academy sign-up day. But our daily activities start at 7.15 with the Health Connections Bend, Breathe, and Balance down in the Health Club. 8 o'clock is the time the Men's Golf Association will be at the Shell Point Golf Club. Also at 8 o'clock we have Pickleball at the Pickleball Court. And then our last 8 o'clock activity is the Round Robin te Doubles Tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. We're going to move to 9 o'clock for the Samba. That's the card game. That will be in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. Shuffleboard will be down at the Shuffleboard Courts at 9.15. Current Events Group will be discussing current events in the Game Room of the Woodlands at 9.30. And we also have 9.30 mat Ladies Match Play Tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Paddlers will be meeting at the Kayak Storage Facility at 9.30 for their weekly adventure out. And then at 9.45 we have the Introduction to Beginning Line Dancing. That's down in the Health Club. At 10 o'clock, we have a Health Connections class, Brain Games, Eye-Hand Coordination, and that's going to be in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. You do need to sign up for that. From 10 to 12, the photo gallery and studio are open for viewing. Basic Line Dancing is going to be down in the Health Club. That's at 10.15. And then the Suzy Q heads to Rum Runners at 11, and sign up is required. That's the morning lineup. Here's Caitlin for your afternoon. Thank you, Bev. We're going to start the afternoon off with Mahjong at 1245. That'll be in the library lounge. And there's a butterfly garden committee meeting in the butterfly garden at 115. Also at 115, we have the spot play readers reading their scripts in the Osprey room. We have a health connections class at 130, Aqua Pilates stretch, and that's in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. In observance of Holocaust Remembrance Day, we will be showing Schindler's List as a Thursday matinee at 1.30 in the Grand Cypress Room, and that'll be instead of a Sunday matinee this week. At 2 o'clock, another Health Connections class, Hearing Loss and Hearing Aids. That'll be in the Oak Room of the Woodlands, and you do need to sign up. 
The photo gallery and studio will be open from 2 to 4 for viewing. And the computer club will gather in the manatee room at 2.15. 245, a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2, and that's in the Health Club, and it's currently full. The seamstress will be here for her weekly service at 4 o'clock. That'll be in the Osprey Room. And the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting will gather in the Sable Room at 4.30. The Singles Table is available at 5.30 in the Crystal Dining Room, and you do need to sign up for that. 6.30, we have Pinochle being played in the Library Lounge. And our last activity is at 7 o'clock with the Trailblazers Bible Study, and that'll be in the game room of the Woodlands. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Menus for Thursday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is Salisbury Steak with mashed potatoes and carrots. The dinner special is the Crystal Carving Board for $13.95. And the soup of the day is Country Cabbage. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is Grilled Meatloaf Sandwich on Rye with Onion Rings for $7.25. The dinner special is a Roast Turkey Avocado Club Panini with Fresh Fruit for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are Ribeye for $19.95 or Salmon Wellington for $17.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm delighted to have Dr. John Stumbo with us uh, today. Uh, John is the president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. That's the denomination with which the Village Church is associated, and also the denomination that is the owner of uh, the Shell Point Retirement Community. So thank you for being with us, John. We appreciate that. I'm delighted. Okay. And we're actually here to talk about denominations. Okay. Uh, I think it's interesting to uh, note, uh, first of all, that the Village Church, uh, while it is uh, associated with the Christian and Missionary Alliance as a denomination, nevertheless has most of its members who have backgrounds in all kinds of other denominations. And uh, which I love, by the way. I grew up Methodist. I've been Presbyterian. Uh, my son is Southern Baptist. You know, so we've got a wide range of those denominations and many others who are involved in the Village Church. And a lot of people might wonder, you know, what does it mean? What are, what's this whole issue about denominations? We look at the Bible, don't exactly see denominations uh, showing up uh, along those lines. Uh, but I've appreciated your insights in, uh, into this, some of this kind of thing. Uh, and you had a wonderful little outline that helped us understand something about what it means to belong to a denomination. Uh, would you share that with us? I'd be happy to, Andy, and I do delight in the fact that Shell Point Village is made up of so many different backgrounds. Uh, that's part of the beauty of the body of Christ, that no one denomination is, is big enough to represent all the glory of God. And so uh, there's, there's different hues and nuances and rhythms that different denominations, cultures, backgrounds, languages bring and that all better together reflect the glory of God. But today there's kind of an anti-denominationalism out there that, that um, the, the death of denominations has been discussed in recent decades. I think that kind of conversation is going to quickly die out, mm. frankly, because this is a great time in human history to be bound together with others that are like-minded. Oh, As the opposition against Christianity grows, even in America, this is a... This is a good time to link arms together, New Testament style, and not just be an autonomous, independent church out there doing our own thing, fighting our own causes, but to be linked arm in arm and even in policy and polity together with, with a broader community uh, for us to not only be defending the cause, but, but also to be forwarding the cause of, of Christ in this world. So you asked about the outcome line that I've been working with. This is not original to me, but, but when you think very simply about what a denomination is, whichever denominational background the viewers come from, 
the, you can think of it in terms of there are three things. There's, a, there's beliefs that we hold. We've gathered around a set of beliefs that we feel like uh, articulate who we are as, as, a, as a body. There's a mission that we share. We haven't just been called to believe things together. We've been called to do something together, to get something accomplished in this world for Christ. And we do that together in, in relationship. So beliefs that we hold, a mission that we share, and relationships that we value. It's not that we don't value other people, but we've linked arms. We've committed ourselves mm -hmm. believing that we get more done together than we would if we just operated independently. And Shell Point Village is a classic example of that. As a local church, you're doing so much for the village itself and for surrounding area. But as you link arms with the broader Christian community of the Christmas Christian Alliance, now you're touching places that your residents will never get to see with their human eyes, but, but you're in North Africa, you're in the Middle East, you're in Europe, you're in South America, you're in Asia, you're all over Asia with, because you're linked with this broader family that shares, that holds a belief system together, shares this mission together, and are convinced we do better together. That's amazing. I, I know that you've, you've pointed out, which I, I, I've recognized uh, before, but I for, certainly value the fact that you pointed out with all of the, the uh, conflicts going on uh, around the globe these days uh, in places uh, like uh, Iraq and in uh, Ukraine and in Syria uh, and in uh, West Africa with the whole Ebola stuff, we, we have works in all of those places, don't we? And so we, we are a body of people, not only here at the Village Church, but we have linked arms with, uh, with uh, brothers and sisters who are doing things to, uh, to really communicate the love of Jesus. And each of those places where those conflicts are raging and sometimes uh, unbelievably raging. And you can't sort of do that by yourselves, can you? Yeah. It is, uh, while very difficult to watch news, uh, on a regular basis, it is encouraging to know that the gospel is advancing through ministry of Shell Point Village as you're connected to the broader work of the Christmas Alliance in all those places that you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's another issue that I think uh, it, it raises the issue of denominations because we have people who are sort of in the builder generation uh, who are here in the Shell Point retirement community. And uh, many of those folks uh, have a loyalty to churches that they came from or denominations, uh, much more so than, for instance, the, the boomer generation, which is the generation that's starting to come into uh, the Shell Point community. Uh, they have less of, a, I think, a loyalty to denominations. Uh, but I think it is important for everybody to recognize uh, that we are part of a group that uh, is bound together, not only in terms of beliefs and mission, and, but also in relationships. Uh, to uh, to be the people of God in this particular place, and I value that uh, immensely, and I think it's important to be a part of this denomination. And we trust that people who come here, uh, whatever their denominational backgrounds might be, will recognize that if they share those beliefs and can uh, resonate with the mission and find the relationships that we have here, that they can uh, be uh, comfortable, and not only comfortable, but also fruitful in the things that God calls them to do. And we're proud to have a Methodist Presbyterian Southern Baptist as one of our pastors. So, <laughs> so bless you, Andy. I'm well, thrilled about your ministry here at the Village that. Church. Yeah, thank you for those insights. And thank you for joining us today on Village Church Connections. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you for joining us on Shell Point today. Be sure to watch tomorrow when we'll have a promo for you about the Shell Point Variety Show. And we'll take a look back on stories from all of this week here on Shell Point today. Until then, this is Adam Brown, hoping you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.